Hi, everybody. So, tonight we're live. I'm going to give this a few minutes. It is 7.30 on the nose for once. I'm actually um, perfectly on time. And I've um, got everything set up, so hopefully I'll be able to read this big enough that uh, I can answer questions if anybody has any. Um, if not, I'll try to do it later. So, I'm just going to give this a couple of minutes and uh, see how uh, we can get a little bit of a group on here. Because... I did kind of promote this a little bit for a little while, so uh, let's see what we can do here because I got a an announcement of something I want to do, so I'm going to be sharing that here in a minute. So I'll give it just a couple of minutes. It is only 7.31, so some people are just coming on. So hello, everybody. Hello to, uh, let's see if I can see. So hello, Emil. Hello, Nita. Hello, Don. Oh, hold on. Um, let's see. I don't know what I'm doing here. Hi, my cousin Debbie. Hi. Uh, hi, Nicole and Denise and Alicia. Hi, Alicia and Rick. So I'm going to give this, um, a couple of minutes and then see we'll see. So hello, Emil. So we'll see how this is going. Hey, Carter. All right. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, thanks for spelling my name wrong, cuz. Uh, I've um, been having fun. I'm going to not get into what I'm doing yet for a minute here, but um, I am going to tell you how much fun I've been having doing the videos I started doing last week. That's been a dream of mine for a long, long time to um, start sharing uh, stuff um, to a bigger audience. So I will um, continue doing so. I didn't do it today because I was preparing for this tonight, and I will be... Um, doing them regularly. So, all right. Well, we've got a few people on. Hey, Tony. So, um, not doing any cooking tonight. Tonight's going to be about talking, but it's going to be talking about um, some really important stuff, I think. And it is talking about food and cooking. Um, so, what I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with telling you guys two stories. So, um, two stories are, um, one, I'm going to explain to you what the Rosetto effect is. Um, the Rosetto effect is a little story about my hometown in Italy. Um, Rosetto, Italy, Rosetto Valfortore, the first immigrants that left that village was about the 1880s. And, um, they came here to the States and they settled in Eastern Pennsylvania near Easton or near Bangor, which some people on here are from. Um, but it's actually called Roseto, Pennsylvania, where they formed a town after the named after the town in Italy. So the quick of it is fast forward to the 1960s and a doctor that was serving the town told a colleague of his that nobody in this town had any heart disease up until a certain age. And when they find this out, they start looking and studying the town. And, and what happened was they studied the obvious. And then in, in the beginning, it was the food. Because um, that's right away, you think heart disease, you're thinking what they're eating. And yes, they were eating fruits and vegetables from their garden. Hi, Betty. Um, but they were also um, eating a lot of salted cured meats, food fried in lard. Um, they were drinking a lot of wine. They were smoking. They were happy. They were healthy. So what could it be? So then they started studying the social and what they found, what they ultimately attributed it to, even though today we know wine is good for you and some healthy fats are good for you, a lot of what they were doing all on top of itself was not heart healthy. So what they attributed it to was the community-centered life, church-centered life, family-centered life, what I call life around the table. Um, they said that the people nourished each other. I say, you know, somebody always had your back. They had multiple generations living together in one house. They all took care of each other. It was a close knit community and community and uh, communication within community. Notice they both begin with calm, um, are important in our lives. So, um, the doctors, you know, did a, it was a many, many years study. And, you know, this was called the Rosetto effect, the effect of living in, in a, situation like this where it actually affected your health in a positive way. So if you Google the Rosetto effect, R-O-S-E-T-O, you're going to find page after page after page, articles, 
there's books written, there's documentaries done. I mean, there is so much information about this. Last year I was in Italy and a friend here sends me a, a, a text message with a, a headline from the New Jersey Star Ledger that said the Rosetto effect in really big letters. And what did it say? It was, it, the, the writer was not from Rosetto. He was not going to Rosetto, but he was going to his town in Italy to find his Rosetto effect. The whole phenomena is about us and where we're from. So anyway, um, so now I'm going to come back to that story in a minute. So now I'm going to tell you another story. Um, and this other story is a, a conversation I had 25 years ago with a really cool pre old priest from Rhode Island with this raspy voice, Father Carmen. We were running the Italian festival down in the D.C. area. And Father Carmen was talking about how important it was to keep this festival going. And so he said to me, he said, you know, Dorina, he goes, first you have your heritage. And then that's, you know, everybody's somebody from someplace. He said, people more in touch with their heritage tend to be more in touch with their faith. Most of the time they're intertwined. If you're some from some place, most likely you're all kind of the same faith. Um, he said, people more in touch with their faith tend to be more in touch with their families. And a lot of times we get the values and the traditions from our heritage and our faith that kind of bond us as families. And people more in touch with their families tend to be better individuals. Of course, this is very general and there's always some good individuals that come from not great families. But you know what? It, it's a very... Um, telling factor of about a lot of these things. So um, those things were always really important to me because heritage, faith, and family were important to me as I grew up and as I grew my family. So, you know, everybody knows that I've been um, in the food industry forever. Um, you know, I grew up in a restaurant, of course, and just having Italian grandmothers. I My, my mother's mother, my nonna was from, you know, from, was Sicilian. Um, and of course, I had my other grandmother in Italy. Um, from Puglia and of course went back and forth all the time. I've been really blessed to be first generation and know my heritage. Um, when I was in the fifth grade, I remember asking another kid in my class, I said, what are you? And he goes, what do you mean? What am I? And I said, well, I'm Italian. What are you? He goes, I'm American. I said, well, I'm American too. I said, but what's, you know, what else are you like? What's your background? In my fifth grade, whatever way I was asking. And, uh, and he said, I don't know, English, Irish, maybe, or something. I don't know. All I, I pegged on was the I don't know. And I remember thinking how amazing it was that somebody didn't know who they were. Okay. So now I've told you my couple stories. I said two, but I told you three. So what I've been doing my whole life is revolving around food. I've been raising my family and doing my stuff on the side. But now it's coming to the forefront. I've spent a lifetime wondering what I was supposed to do and knowing I was supposed to do something bigger than me. And even though um, people say that I've had um, lots of big things I've done, just raising six kids was a big thing. Um, it has been something nagging that there's something even bigger. And the whole point was, is that I wasn't, time wasn't ready yet. All of a sudden now my daughter, my youngest uh, is, is a senior in high school and all of a sudden everything's coming together that now's the time. Um, as I've been teaching people how to cook, which is what I do now, even though I've had a restaurant, I do catering, I've done all that stuff, it's boiled down to the teaching people how to cook. And it used to be the reason to was to teach people how to cook to save money, to be healthier, um, just for it to taste better. But I realize now the more important thing is about that Rosetto effect. Um, it's about bringing people together in community. It's more about family or community, um, whether it's family, whether it's friends, the, the family you create. So I am kind of on a mission. It has all culminated into, I want to bring people back to the table. So I'm starting a movement and I really mean this. I want two things to be known nationwide. I want the Rosetto effect to be revived. And I want this to be a back to the table movement where we all get about learning how to cook if we don't know how already, whether it's through my videos or through uh, your own videos. If you're not Italian, you don't have to be Italian. I will teach Italian food. I teach basics of how to cook. But what I'm seeking is cooking teachers all over the country that we're going to ultimately 
put in a database. I'm going to have a website built right now. Well, we're already in, in the works. Um, that'll be a database of cooking teachers where if you want to find a, a Greek cooking grandma in Scottsdale, Arizona, then you'll be able to find one by putting it the parameters into the website and being able to find it. That's the plan right now. That's how we're working it. I want this to be a tool for us to seek out who we are. Because one more time now, um, getting back to the Father Carmen story, he talked about heritage, faith, and family. Well, right now in this country, do we have any of that? We don't. We don't have any heritage. We have no faith. We have no families. And we've got a bunch of lonely individuals running around wondering where to go next. It's it's really a difficult time in our in our country. And so I think that if we bring people back to the table, it will make a huge difference. And how do we do that? We have so many people anymore that don't know how to cook because we lost a lot of generations of teachers in our grandmothers and mothers who didn't cook anymore, whether it was because they were working or, you know, we became able to go out and buy meals and didn't realize how it was affecting our health mentally and physically until now. I think now we know. And I think we also need to seek out our heritages because in our heritage, um, that's how we know who we are. And I think we are uh, seeking so much to know who we are just by the popularity of DNA testing. DNA testing to me tells me people are seeking their identity. I think that people really want to know who they are. And I find people asking me how to cook things because they just learned their Italian and they want to know how to make some Italian foods. So what we do is we teach people how to cook because when I cook dinner, I expect everybody at the table. I want to see them eating the food I just made. Now, most likely when I'm cooking, I'm making Italian food. So now I have heritage and family at the table. Then what's next? I can't get them to go to church on Sunday. hate admitting that. But I can get them to say grace and give thanks at the table. Now I have heritage, faith, and family at the table. What's another big problem in this country? Another big problem is mental health. And it all boils down to the fact that we have such a broken down core. And what's the first line of defense in mental health? Well, in my book, it's the table. Because if we're sitting around eating at the table and I'm across from you and I said, what's the matter? Why are you blue? And, you know, you're, you're my kid and you tell me that, you know, you didn't do well on a test today or somebody was mean to you at school. Well, guess what? Let's invite that kid over for cookies because we know how to make them. And let's or let's get you a tutor because I stink at math, too. So by doing this, we solve problems and we raise people up instead of ignoring them. Meals should be together facing each other. That's how you see problems, how you solve them, how you fix them before they become big. So we need to come together as families, as communities, as friends. If you are one of those people that I have friends who are, are single individuals who don't have family, they were only children or whatever, and they have no family and they don't have anybody to have over for Sunday dinner. Well, you know what? Create that family, get some friends, some neighbors, join a club, whatever. There are ways to create your community in your community. So I want to know, you know, who's with me, who wants to help me on this road trip here, because it is definitely going to be a ride. It's going to be something awesome. And I think it's going to be something that has the power to change a lot of big things in this world, in this country starting. We are, America is a leader in the world. And if our core is crumbling, then how can we um, lead? But we can do that from the bottom building block of society, from the table. So I'm really hoping that, um, you know, there's some people here who are interested in helping me on this mission um, cause what do I want? You know, I want, um, I'm looking for people to help me build this mission, help me, um, you know, uh, who believe in what I'm talking about, um, who want to help share the idea, participate, build it. Um, if you know, cooking teachers, have them start contacting me and it can be a chef in a restaurant or it could be some grandmother who is getting ready to make lasagna and decides she needs some help and she'd be happy to teach somebody while they're helping her. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Food brings people together. 
the table is where everything in life happens, everything important, whether it's big decisions, where we celebrate, where we mourn, where we pay the bills, where we hand kids, hand the kids some money, whatever it is, um, and we eat. But everything important happens at the table. And so we really need to come back to the table and make it an important place. Because you know what? There's, you order a pizza, there's no incentive with a pizza in a box to sit at the table. Most of the times you throw it on the coffee table and you eat it watching TV. But you should never be facing the same direction as the people you're eating with. Because there's no connection there. You're facing the same way. You should always be facing each other. And that's where connection happens. So it's really, really important. And I really want to make this be huge. Um, I've always wanted to do something huge and this is it. I really feel um, like this is a movement and I am fully driven to accomplish this. And I have, you know, some people in the background who are working on this with me and I'm really excited by it. You know, the other thing that I want to point out is that about heritage. I really believe that we all need to seek out our heritages. We all grew up, at least my age, we grew up learning that America was a melting pot. But you know what? I think that's the wrong term for us. I don't think that we should be a melting pot. I think we should be more like an antipasto platter. Of course, I'm going to bring it back to Italian food. But anyway, we should be more like an antipasto platter. We should be where everything shines on its own. And yet together, it's this gorgeous platter. So that's what I'm, I'm, I'm striving for. I want to encourage all of you to seek out your own heritage. Because I think we are more alike in our differences than we are different. Whether you are, you know, Italian, Catholic, or Russian, Jewish, you know what? You still have heritage and faith that makes your family tightly bound. And that's where respect comes for other people. I think that people who have the most problem with other people are the ones who don't necessarily know who they are. So know who you are. I can tell you that um, since I started taking people on these trips to Italy, I, you know, by fluke, took some people last summer who were actually of the heritage of my town who found me by accident online. So I've got two sisters and a brother. I know one of you is watching. And, um, and I think that bringing them there and showing them our town was the, one of the most incredible, incredible things I've ever done because I'm sitting here in the middle of a cooking class and they are learning things that their grandmother used to make and they're crying. And then I'm crying because they are so moved because they're saying, this is the, this is the dish. This is the flavor that my grandmother made and I could never get it right. My father says it's not quite right. And now I think I've got it. So seeing that just showed me how much it moves for somebody to learn something about where they're from. It's an, it's an incredible feeling. I know every time I step foot off the airplane over there, and I'm in Italy, where people can pronounce my name and all that stuff uh, and without any problems. Um, you know, I think that uh, it's, it's just a wonderful feeling. So know who you are, learn the foods of your heritage, share it with your family, bring traditions back. I last week was, you know, uh, watching something online and somebody had written in one of the Italian groups how they were lamenting that their kids didn't know anything about, you know, the old school family stuff. The thing is, we need to take responsibility to teach them. And if we don't know it, learn it. I'm still learning stuff about myself, and I've always known who I was, and yet I'm still learning. So please, come with me on this, this beautiful mission and this movement to bring America back to the table. Um, in, in every which way I'm going to do it, whether it's teaching them one by one, or as a whole through a website where we can connect cooking teachers of ethnicities to people who are seeking. And anybody who wants to connect and affiliate with the Back to the Table movement will then go on our website and be shared with the world. And I think that we could really build strong connections and maybe we can get rid of some of the animosity that is in our country right now, some of the... Um, some of the things that, that, that tear us apart. We need to bring them together. So this was my big announcement for the night. I really, really hope that you got something out of it. Um, and I hope that you'll please share this 
with as many, many people as you can so that we can start making a movement. What I want you all to do who are watching, um, I have started a Facebook group. There's nobody in it yet, um, but it's called Back to the Table. So go to the Back to the Table. If you can't find it, um, then go to my Dorena's Kitchen page and you can see a, 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 you know, a, a section there where you can link to it. Back to the Table, we're calling it BT3. Because, you know, back to the table, there's a three T, so BT to the third. So you might uh, see that somewhere. Um, you know, and with my heritage project of getting people to learn who they are and learn their foods. Because there is so much good food in this world. And how wonderful is it that we can, you know, learn our own and then share it with your friends. And um, I, even one of, my, one of my boys who's in college, we were talking about him starting a, 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 a Friday night, you know, dinner dinner group where they would get together and everybody brings something of their background. So how cool would that be? Um, if we could get people and kids at the colleges and high schools to realize how important it is to eat together. So if anybody has any questions, you can write them on here. You can let me know, um, right now, or you can send it to me later, or you can email me at Darina's kitchen at gmail.com. But please join my groups, uh, follow my Darina's Kitchen page, join the Darina's Kitchen Table pay, uh, group and the Back to the Table group. And let's start um, making this happen. I'll be back. I'll be talking about it more, but there's a lot of other things I'll be talking in my videos in the morning and doing some cooking stuff in the afternoons. So I hope to see you a couple times a week at least. Um, I'll be on every day during the weekdays and occasionally on the weekends. So stay tuned for lots more and I will um, be seeing you guys soon. I'm going to go upstairs and have dinner with my husband and my daughter. And I hope you guys do the same. Ciao. Buona notte and buon appetito.